What are we meaning when we talk about symmetry? Symmetry simply describes where an object is the same on each side of an axis, one side being the mirror or reverse of the other. So this Berlin church is symmetrical. We can see that if we put an axis down the middle, that it's the same on the left hand side to the right hand side. Architecture clearly has a lot of symmetry. It's not hard to come across buildings where one side is a mirror image of the other side. So clearly when I'm drawing a symmetrical building, it's really important that on each side of our axis, the building looks the same. That objects that are meant to be the same size look the same size. Objects that are meant to be equally spaced look equally spaced. And of course, buildings can look symmetrical from one viewpoint, but not have the same symmetry when we view them from a side on perspective. Instead of equally spacing objects, the challenge is to compress them in foreshortening as they move further away from the viewer. My first tip in achieving symmetry drawing architecture is probably most easily demonstrated with this columned portico. The challenge is to get however many columns we need looking the same size and equally spaced. Here's my tip when I do that. The first thing I need to do is count the columns because I need to know whether the symmetrical axis is a column or is it the gap between the columns. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. So half the columns is four. And so the axis is going to be here. This is the halfway point where I want one side to mirror the other side. I start my vertical line that's going to be above the columns, but I'm careful to keep it well short of what I think it will need to be because I don't know how far along it's going to go. And I'm going to let space in the columns determine how long this line will be because it would be a very tricky or lucky thing to draw this the length I think it would be, put columns on both ends and then be able to space the remaining six columns equally in that gap and have it look the way it looks in real life. I can make them a bit narrow if I want because of the shading that I get to apply in the background. So again, for the same reason, I'll take this bottom line only as far as I've taken the top line. Now, the most important column to draw is actually the second one because this is where I determine the spacing. The way I do it is with this first line, I don't start to draw the column, I actually draw the space between these two columns and at its narrowest, it's possibly half as wide as the column again. There's my second column. I like to do something just to indicate where the columns are and not the gap. I've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six columns, and I'm going to need to have eight, six, seven, eight. And now I have my eight columns, and they're quite accurately spaced. That's probably better. My columns were a little bit tall. And there is actually a step that goes behind the columns. I'm able to make some adjustments. And if I decide any of my gaps are slightly too narrow with a column too big, such as in this one, I can actually, because of the way the shade works out in the background here, I can take a little off the column and put it into the gap. Now in drawing the pediment, it's also a very important feature for the symmetry. What I need to do is make sure that the top of the pediment lines up with the center point between the two central columns. And I like to actually put that dot in place. These are the methods I use when I'm drawing something symmetrical, such as a colonnade directly in ink, so there's no pencil outline, there's no chance to erase any wrong lines. But I have found drawing the various symmetrical elements in this order, in this way, gives me the greatest chance for the greatest accuracy. My second tip for achieving greater symmetry in an architecture drawing is to do with windows. Windows can be a problem 
because there's often many of them and they're often lined up in horizontal and vertical rows and there's a certain number that need to fit within a certain space, which can be tricky enough if we have just one group to draw. But if we have symmetrical wings of a building and the windows have to match on each side in all those directions, it can be tricky. And before I show you what I do, let me show you what I often see rows of windows being drawn like this. In effect, the artist is pushing a line, dragging a line down, dragging a line back the other way, pushing the line up. Four very different requirements of control, of energy and of accuracy. What can happen so easily is that we get window creep, where one edge of a row of windows starts to shift up because every time we align with the window to the left, it's not quite aligned exactly. And by the time we get to our last window, the difference between the first and last window can be quite large. Well, firstly, we need a building. And it's the same principle I use with the columns. With these first windows, I do need to draw them carefully. I like the fact that with windows, there are often things such as window ledges and surrounds that give us space to make a few adjustments to get our frames lined up exactly. So now I have two windows here and what I need to do is to line up my windows beneath Here we have some windows which we need to apply symmetrically on each side. I'm just going to have to try and adjust these lines a little bit. One of the problems of working with an overhead camera is that I can't put my head over what I draw. However, no more excuses. The first thing I do is I position the corner of the window with a dot. So this space is about that space and this space is about this space. If I get this window correct, then I can use it as a template for the next one. Now, when I come down, I don't want to join up these lines. I want to create a rectangle that's the same size as there. Of course, it would be good if that joined up those lines, but the important thing is to get the window the same size. And the third window is the same. And now the side of the building. Now I'm going to go across on the other side. And it's the same principle. I'm wanting to create rectangles where the proportions are the same. I don't want them to be longer or squarer than the ones I've drawn. Now that I have three equally spaced on each side, I can come down. And it's the same principle. I want to line up these windows here and I want to follow under the ones I've already drawn. It's so important to get these first ones drawn accurately. And I can see if I look as I look across here that I've started these lines slightly lower as I went along. So I need to make sure I restore that. Now I have the three windows to do on the other side. And we'll put some more windows underneath. But now we want some windows on each side that match up with what we've drawn above. And so by drawing this way, by carefully aligning from the first very carefully drawn windows, and by letting the accurately drawn windows create the size of the building, I find it's easier to get an accurate symmetrical drawing. Often in windows such as this, we have crossbars, and again, they can cause a real problem. I often end up seeing them looking as though they were put in somewhat like that. Let's say that all these windows have a vertical bar and the top ones have a bar going through the middle. I would draw all the vertical ones straight down first. I find that gives me the greatest chance of having lines that line up vertically. The cross lines, I do it the same way. And that then gives the horizontal alignment. Now let's say we have some cross lines on these long windows. I would establish them on one window and then I would go across and I would go across with the central ones first. And then we have some approximate alignment with those and it's the same with these windows down here. You can see what a moment's inattention does. 
When you make a mistake like that, and it's easily done when there's lots of elements, always put the correct lines in the correct places. That mistake is not nearly as obvious as it was before I corrected it. This is the way when I'm faced with rows and rows of windows and I'm drawing directly in ink, so I can't do a pencil outline. I find this is the best methodology to keep the windows nice and symmetrical as well as the proportions correct. My third tip for achieving symmetry is to do with curves and probably the most demanding curves we draw are connected with domes. They can be actually quite large and they're often silhouetted against the skyline so therefore they attract more visual attention. How often do we do domes that end up being something like this? But I think part of our problem is that we seek to draw the dome in one go. Actually, that one's not too bad. Even on small domes or small curves, I divide into parts. I always remember that a circle fits in a square and it's easier to draw one quarter of a circle accurately than it is to draw the whole circle in one go. And for most of us, one of these quarters is easier to draw. For me, it's this one, and that's pretty common for a right-handed person. For a left-handed artist, it may be this one. Because that's the easiest direction for me to have control and draw accurately, I turn my paper so that the other half of the dome becomes my easiest to draw section. Now, I don't draw this square framework, but in my mind I do. And what I will do is I'll mark a small point for where the center of the diameter of the dome will be. And I will also mark a small point where I want to aim at for the top of the dome. Domes aren't completely round. Some domes are elongated and have other elements on top. So we have to pay attention to the dome, but many domes, particularly larger domes, do have this full round circled fit. So let's have a go at drawing a large fancy dome and achieve symmetry. So firstly, we need a base for the dome to sit on, usually called the drum. And I want the halfway point. Now I want to get this distance upwards because that's going to be the top. Now I mark where I want the dome to come to. And very importantly, I do a practice because I want to get this fullness. I don't want the dome to end up being more like a shallow diagonal line. I want the fullness of the curve. There I have one side. To maximize my efficiency, I turn my paper so that the other half of the dome is still the sweet spot. Now, on this center line here, I'm going to put a small lantern. All the time, anything on this center line that's symmetrical, I go back to my center line, which is this point here in the dome. So here we have our dome. Now there are decorative elements in this dome that we want to keep symmetrical. This side of our dome has got five segments that we're looking at. And the third, the center segment, we're looking at straight on. So here are some columns. And then we space to the left and to the right, making sure that the spaces between our columns get narrower as we go away from the center. Because the curve of the drum has the effect looking straight on of moving the elements closer together, the more extreme the curve is. And I'm going to put a little row of statues on top of these. And let's put some windows in as well. Now we know about doing the windows from the previous point. That's our front on window but these windows will be curving away from us, so they will become narrower. And see how that creates the effect of the windows curving around nice and symmetrically on each side. The important thing is that as we narrow them, that this window is approximately the same size as this one, and this one is approximately the same size, and the mirror image of this one. Whatever I do here, I want a mirror on this side. But let's just put some, some ribs on our dome to help show the dome shape. Now, 
I've done the three on the side that's easiest for me to do. I'm imagining a straight line down here and I want to mirror this line this way. Always get a good look as to where you want the line to finish, which is probably about there. Because once we get to this stage of a drawing, it's easy to start to want to have a bit of fun with it too. So here we have our dome looking nice and symmetrical. 